So far, we have worked with X-ray to read the data satellite imagery. We have read some related raster data in the NetCDF format. We can also read any other raster data. Uh, we're going to work with a package called Rio X-ray, which is an extension of X-ray, which is built on Rasterio. Rasterio is a Python package that is widely used for working with raster data. It supports reading and writing rasters in a variety of formats. Rasterio has it's a kind of old style package. You have to read files and close files and all of that. It doesn't work with multi-temporal data. So X-Ray has now integrated Rasterio within the X-Ray ecosystem. So now you can read and write any raster data just the way you would read any other X-Ray data set. And we can do this using Rio X-Ray. So let's learn how to read some elevation data and do some processing. We first install this Rio X-Ray package. Rio X-Ray by convention is imported as RXR. One tip is if you are reading some raster data using X-Ray and you want to get access to all the projections and all the spatial primitives, you still have to import Rio X-Ray. Even if you're not using Rio X-Ray, you have to import it. By importing it, it makes it available to X-Ray and whatever you read in X-Ray will become a Rio X-Ray data set. Now, this is kind of a different than many of the libraries that even if you're not using it, import it. So if you're reading any geospatial raster data, always import Rio X-Ray so you get access to all the projections and spatial primitives. We're going to take four different raster data sets. These are elevation data set from SRTM, where you have tiles of raster data where each pixel value is the elevation of this data. So these are four different tiles around Mount Everest region. We're going to read each of those, learn how to use the X-ray to read them. We're going to then learn how to merge them into a merged raster. So Rio X-ray also provides functions to merge rasters spatially. And then we're going to learn about how to create a visualization and annotate them. First, well, let's learn more about Rio X-ray. If you want to read any raster data, it supports hundreds of different formats GeoTIFF, JP2, HGT, all the different raster formats. You can read any of them. You have to say rioxray.openrasterio and the file path. And what you get is your X-ray data set. So it's an X-ray data array object. So this is a one band image. So you can see there are 3,600 rows and columns, only one band of data, which is just the elevation values. And this is in 4326, when so you have your coordinates. This is 30 meter resolution elevation data set. As we learned, you can just call dot values and see the pixel values. The pixel values here is the elevation of that pixel in meters. So if this pixel value is 5098, this is 5098 meters is the elevation that was measured at that pixel. Since we have read this data using Rasterio, you get some extra stuff. You have this Rio accessor, which allows you to access the projection and other transform that available for any projected data set. So if you can say rds.rio.crs, you'll get the CRS. So now raster actually knows what is the projection of this data, what is the resolution, height, width, and the bounds. And this is the kind of difference between just using X-ray. When you read using X-ray, X-ray doesn't understand projections. You will get a grid of pixels and some dimensions, but unless you are using Rio X-Ray in the background, it doesn't know about projections. So that's why Rio X-Ray makes all of this possible. All of the X-Ray power is now possible to work with any raster data. You can use the same primitives that we've used with X-Ray. So we have this data, which has got just one band. So let's just select this one band and get a two dimensional array. So we can just select one of the bands and see that. So you can see now we have this one band data and you can use this to visualize this. Let's visualize this. We have four rasters. So we're going to learn how to visualize multiple rasters in a single plot. First, we're going to read all the data. We have four tiles. You're going to open each of those tiles and you're going to create a list of those data sets. So here we have our four files. We're going to read each of them using Rio X-Ray you can get a data array, you can get a list of four data arrays. Now we want to plot them. 
will create a figure with four plots. Here we say uh, one row, four columns. And we're going to now iterate over each of this. We have four rasters in this. So we can say, I want to iterate and plot the first raster in the first axis, second raster in the second axis, and so on. When you create a subplot, this axis object is maybe a nested list. So if you have two rows, two columns, it'll be a list of list. And that makes it very hard to iterate. So when you have multiple axis, there's this function called flat. Axis.flat will give you a flat list, which you can iterate over. We are using enumerate, so we get the index of that axis and the axis itself. As we are iterating, we can get the, the axis and its index in this axis list. We say, take the same index from the data set. We have four axis and we have four data set. Say, take the first data set, put it on the first axis. Take the second data set, put it on second axis and so on. And we're just using our x-ray plot.imshow function, and then we can see the plot. So now we have created this visualization where if we have multiple rasters and we want to visualize, we can now plot it in a single chart. We can also change this to any layout that we want. If you do two, two, we'll get two rows and two columns. And we have to change the size if you want to have a map that looks good on two by two, we have to change the figure size and you'll get nicer rendering. Now these are four individual tiles. They are at different places spatially. If you want to merge them to create a single raster, we have to merge those arrays spatially. And this is something that's very hard to do otherwise. Rio X-Array comes with a merge function. It says, I'll give me a list of arrays, I'll merge them and create a single array out of that. Okay, let's merge this rasters into a single one. We have this merge arrays functions, which takes a list of data set and then merges them. This rasters do not have any overlaps. What if you had overlaps? How would you decide what value to use when there's an overlap? There are different methods. You can use max, min, first, last, whatever. Here there's no overlap, so it doesn't matter what we use, but we just use the first. So let's say whatever the first value is that you take that in the overlapping clusters. Now we have a single merge array. Remember each array was 3,600 pixels. Now we have a, you know, 7,200 by 7,200 uh, pixel array where it's a merged array. And this operation also takes care of changing your projection and the transform so that array is located at the correct place. And finally, we can visualize the, the merged raster. So now this is our merged raster where we have taken four individual tiles, merged them together, and we have a single legend and you can see this whole area. One of the cool things that you can do is if you're reading some data set from a cloud data source, you've done some processing, or you're taking the source data, doing merge, and you said, this is useful. I want to now download this merge data locally. If you have read the data using Rio X-Ray, Rio X-Ray also allows you to save the data to any other raster format. So now we have our merge array. We can easily save it into any other supported raster format. Here we're going to save it as a GeoTIFF file, not just GeoTIFF. There's a version of GeoTIFF called Cloud Optimized GeoTIFF. So we can take any raster and say Rio to raster. This is a function to save this raster in any of the supported format. You'll be using Cloud Optimized GeoTIFF. You can just give a dot .tiff and it'll be a regular GeoTIFF. And when we run this, this will be saved and a new file will be created, which you can now use in your GIS software. You can see we have created this merge.tiff raster, which is a nice cloud optimized GeoTIFF raster, which you can open in a GIS environment. You can also stick it in a cloud server and you can access those data directly, stream it to any of the services that support cloud optimized GeoTIFF. The reason we kind of merge all of this is because we want to now render this and show an important feature here. So this is the region around Mount Everest. You can see the center region is Mount Everest. This is the highest elevation in this data set. So let's learn how to add some annotations to our matplotlib plot. So far, we not add any labels. And if you want to add labels, you need to use this function called annotate, which allows you to annotate your plots with some text. Annotation requires you to say where you want to put the annotation. So you need to know which is the coordinate 
where you want to put your annotation and what's the text you want to know. So we want to annotate this plot by saying, where is the location of Mount Everest? We want to have an arrow saying that this is Mount Everest and we want to annotate this is the elevation of that. So first we need to figure out what is the elevation of Mount Everest in this data set and where is Mount Everest? You can do some processing. Here we say, take our merge data. We are using this where function to figure out where are the coordinates of the max. So let's just do it step by step. So first we say, tell me where merged is equal to merge.max. Okay. So we want to say for every array value, is this the max value? And we get, we want to select that. When we do this, you'll get no data everywhere else except where this condition matched. And we don't want no data. We just said where it condition did match. I don't want anything. So we'll just say, we'll add the drop equal to true here. We'll say drop the values where the condition did match. So now you get only one value. It says, oh, max value is 8748. And these are the X and Y coordinates. So this is the location where the max value occurred. You can see this, we have this extra, it's a list of list. So there's an empty band dimension here. It's a very common pattern where you have this empty dimension. There's a function called squeeze. We'll just remove any dimension which is empty. In Excel world where you do some query and you say, I have data set, three dimensional data set, but the third dimension is empty. There's no data there. So you can call squeeze and just remove that. So now we have this single value 8748 and we can just say, show me that and that's the values so you can see my i could extract the value of the maximum value in the data set also i knew where that occurs in the data set i knew the latin long of that and you can see i have my array along with the x in my location so i could find where is mount everest and what's the elevation there I can extract those values and say, this is the like X and Y coordinate of that location. And this is the value. And now we can annotate that. So we do our plot the X-ray. This is just doing a different color. So we have this color. And now we say, if we want to annotate, say that Mount Everest elevation is whatever. So this is the value that we extracted. What is the location that we want to annotate? This is the location of the coordinate that we found. Where do we want to put the text? We want to, as a text, we say offset by 20 pixels. So we said move away 20 pixels in X and Y direction and put it there and have an arrow pointing to the annotation. Let's run this. This will now add point marker. We have putting this point marker here and with 11 marker size and we have this text which is annotating that location. So now we have put a marker along with this annotation with our arrow pointing there. And this is how we add labels to your matplotlib plot. You need to figure out yourself where the labels go. There's no automatic label placement. And this is something that makes matplotlib a bit harder to use for geospatial maps where if you use a GIS software, it'll place the labels automatically. There's a label placement algorithm that goes in places labels. Here you have to find the position of each label and say, render this on this place and connect it. 